So I've taken the OSC pre-processing script within Serial and made some modifications to it. So when you run this version of it, it'll actually create your final stack using a master dark and a master bias file. Uh, those of you that know what those are, this may be good news to you, maybe not, maybe you're doing it manually. Either way, I had some requests to have to put something together like this. So that's what I've done. But I need to point out that this is specific to those of you that are using a dedicated astronomy camera that is cold because having a cold camera obviously keeps the sensor at the same temperature throughout your whole session which allows you to use these master darks and master bias files. DSLR, mirrorless users, you can try it. It'll actually work. But the problem is, is because you can't keep your sensor at a specific temperature at, the, at a consistent temperature throughout your session, the ambient temperature is the only thing you have to go on. And you don't really know what that sensor temperature is. So you can go out and shoot and mark down that it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit that night and create your master dark and your master bias based on that temperature. But no, there's going to be fluctuations even throughout the night. That temperature is never going to be consistent on that sensor. So your results may vary, but you can give it a try. It's not going to hurt anything. ASI Air users, I uh, want to thank everybody who replied to my community post on my YouTube channel when I was asking about it. I don't personally have an ASI Air, so I wasn't able to play with this. But it sounds like the ASI Air will, first, it will generate the calibration frames for us. And then you can bring it into Cyril and use the default OSC pre-processing script. But there's also an option that will create the master dark and the master bias files for you. You should still be able to use this script with those. Just bring those files over, those two master files, and follow the procedure that I'm going to go through in this video. And everything should work out fine for you. So um, enough talking about it. Let me show you how it works, where you can get it. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So let's start first by how to create your master files, your master darks and your master biases. I know a lot of you already have those and you're ready to roll and use the script to see how it works. But before we get to that point, I just want to go over it for the people that don't know. There's two ways you can do it. The first way is manually using our conversion and stacking tabs over here. That's not what this video is about. I'm trying to keep this at the beginner level. If you want to learn how to do all this stuff manually yourself, I do have a video on the channel for that. I'll leave a link up in the top right corner for that one. So the easiest way to do it is your next session that you process through Cyril, once you've come through and you run the OSC pre-processing script, you can come over and you can open up your working directory and you'll see that the script created a master's directory. If you open that up, there's your master bias and your master dark file. The PP flat is specific to that session. You can't reuse that for anything. So for the bias, you only need to create one master file that you can use on multiple sessions, all your future sessions. The darks are a little bit different. This is where you hear people talking about creating their dark library. So if I was to go up one level for my bubble nebula and look at my lights folder, I can see the naming convention shows me that I was running at minus 10 degrees Celsius and I was doing 480 second exposures. So keeping that in mind, if I go back over to the masters and grab my dark file, copy it, and then I have a folder where I keep my masters right here for my darks, and then paste it here. And then you can see I have other ones already set up, but what I would do is rename the copied master file to 480 seconds, minus 10, and then I put in 125 for my gain, 20 is my offset for my camera, and then I would go and enter the date and hit enter. Naming convention, this doesn't matter. This is for your own library. So we have to rename this file anyways before we use it for the script. So however you wanna name these, I'm gonna delete the one that I just created because like I said, I already have a 480 second one. For the bias master file, same thing. If I go back into my bubble nebula and open up my masters, I'd grab my bias, I would copy that over and then back over to where I'm storing all of my masters. And I have a bias folder for that and i would paste it into here and rename it so i know how how and when it was created um again i'm not gonna keep this one but you can see up top here i renamed it 125 20 so 125 is my gain 20 is my offset and the date that it was created as far as how long can you use these for word on the street is six months some people go longer i, I would say recreate these every six months uh, just because your sensor, as it ages, it, it can develop more hot pixels, other defects and such things that are being corrected by the master files. There could be additional data in there that needs to be corrected as well as time progresses. So I would say 
every six months, create yourself a new new library for your darks and a new master for your bias. So that's where we're at right now. I've got my bias and then I've got a small library of my darks. So the script, I'll leave the link down in the description, but it's on my OneDrive account. If you just download it and then while you have Cyril open, if you do not know where your scripts directory is at, come over here to the hamburger menu up top and go to preferences. And then on the left hand side, hit scripts. You'll see the location where the scripts are stored. Now, in previous videos, I had told people to go ahead and put them in the program files scripts directory. Serial doesn't recommend that. So that was a, a bad suggestion, mainly because a future update may actually delete your custom scripts that you have because it's in Serial's directory. So what I've done is created a folder structure on my C drive, astrophotography serial scripts. And that's where I keep all of my custom scripts, including the one that we just downloaded. So we'll come over here and copy that and paste it into place. So if you need to do the same thing, the easiest way, instead of typing that in, like I said, there's my location. If I just highlight my path, right click and copy. And if I come back into serial, then just on this next line, I can right click and paste and it'll drop it in and then hit apply. Obviously, I have it in there already. Don't need it twice. I'm going to back out of that. Now, the next time you close and reopen Serial, the new script will be loaded. Or you could just type reload scripts over in the command line. And that'll do the same thing for you. So we can check it. There's the new script. OSC preprocessing, master, dark, and bias. So there is some prep that you have to do before the script will work. Just like the original OSC preprocessing script, there's a specific folder structure that it's looking for. So if we come back over into sessions, bubble nebula, and I'm going to delete what I had here from a practice run. This is all you need. All we need as far as your individual images are concerned, your individual frames are your flats and your lights. You don't need biases. You don't need darks because we're using the masters. What you do need to do is create the master folder yourself in your working directory. And then within the master's directory, you want to copy both your master bias and your master dark. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to grab my bias master first, put that in my newly created masters folder. And then again, if I look at my light frame, so I know which dark master I need 480 seconds. So if I go back over to where I store my masters, there's my 480 second at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So I'll copy that one over again into the newly created masters folder. Now we need, we just need to rename these so the script can find them. Our bias file, we're going to rename to bias underscore stacked. And these are the na same names that the original OSC preprocessing script gave us. So just to keep it simple and familiar to everybody with the darks, we're going to rename that one to dark underscore act. And that's it. That's all the prep work you need to do. So before you run the script, you should have all your flats in your flats folder, your lights in your lights folder, and our two masters in our master folder. Now, all we need to do is come over to Cyril, make sure we have our working directory set correctly. For me, it is the bubble. Verify up top as always that we're sending in the folder that we're expecting it to be. And then just come up to your scripts menu and hit the DSA OSC preprocessing master dark and bias script. And just like the OSC preprocessing script does, it'll go through and register and stack everything for you. Obviously this time using your master bias and master dark files instead of the individual frames. Okay, the script has completed. Um, nothing different at this point, just open up the result file that it created just like the original OSC preprocessing script. And we can give it a quick auto stretch to see what we get. And there you go, there's the bubble. If you jump back over into your working directory, again, there's the process folder for all the files that it converted and registered and such. But if we open up our masters folder again, you'll see the PP flat stacked. So this was the, the this is the master flat that it created using the master bias that we placed in there previous to running the script. So in the end, everything ends up looking the same, just a way for you to build your master dark and your master bias library to use in future sessions. So you don't have to be out there in the middle of the night shooting your darks, because obviously that's what takes us the longest.
Hopefully this script is useful for a lot of you guys, especially using a master dark file, saves you a lot of time during your imaging session. You don't have to stay out there after your session is complete. You don't need to run through and shoot all your master darks and your biases. The darks are the ones obviously that take a long time because they have to be at the same exposure as your light. So, you know, you could be looking at another couple hours sometimes, just depending on what you're going and how many frames you deem necessary for your session. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I want to thank all of my supporters, both here on YouTube and over on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I also appreciate everybody's time. Anybody that watches the videos and leaves a comment, I'm having a lot of fun doing this stuff. So I, I, again, thanks to everybody for watching. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video in clear skies.